What's up guys, Max Max Works here, and today I'm gonna to show you how we have built a custom surf pipe for my 2004 Taiga 22B. Now a surf pipe, a lot of people may know it as a fresh air exhaust. Um, that term is actually uh, the name of a company, the name of a product, the name of a patent. And so we're not gonna use it in this video, um, but this is the same thing. Uh, the kind of generic industry term for it is called a surf pipe. So before we get into it, what is a surf pipe and why do we care? A surf pipe is nothing more than a device that takes the exhaust from a wakeboarding boat, whether it's dual exhaust or single exhaust, and reroutes it outside the boat down into the center line of the prop wash. <clears throat> you might ask, why would you want your exhaust going down into your prop wash? Then you don't get all that nice burbly burbly noise. Well. It does two things. First of all, it represents about a 90% reduction in carbon monoxide um, and other exhaust gases that you are breathing while surfing off the back of the boat, um, which isn't great for your health. And the second thing it does is it cuts your noise down by about 50%. <clears throat> now, the upside of cutting engine noise down by 50% is it's now much more easy to hear the surfer, to hear your guests on the boat, um, and you get a lot more bang for your buck out of your sound system because it's not fighting with a small block Chevy for uh, you know noise dominance. So basically, it's a very simple thing. Um, the company that I mentioned earlier is actually based here in Austin, Texas. The guy who invented it is here, and uh, they do a fantastic job. Um, for five or six hundred dollars, they will custom make you one and then send it to you. And the installation is very trivial. I have a YouTube channel, so we're not going to spend $600, we're going to build our own. That being said, um, I'm actually building out of T304 stainless, uh, the bends, the straights, um, it's not cheap. So if I think I'm in this project about $150, $160. Um, I will post the links to everything that I have um, down in the description below. They're affiliate Amazon links, they help the channel, and I appreciate it if you guys use them. And I will also put up a total spreadsheet right now on the screen um, to show you guys how much I spent on different stuff and, and kind of what it costs. Um, but the key components are you need a straight piece of stainless, you need two of these stainless 90s, um, you need some three inch marine grade exhaust tube, some warm clamps, and some 3M uh, 5200 uh, adhesive slash sealant. Um, and so the surf pipe is broken up into, into three distinct categories. Uh, category number one is how do we attach to the boat? I'm going to show you guys we're going to make some adapters to make this thing removable. Number two is building the surf pipe itself. Um, it's not particularly difficult, but the fit and finish uh, definitely reflects how much time you put into it. And number three is we need to brace it to the boat. It's under a lot of force. Water can really transfer a lot of energy. And so you want um, this thing to be very secure to the back of the boat because you don't want it falling off of the lake because it can cause you injury problems and is, you don't want to leave stuff in the lake. So we're just kind of going to work through all three of these steps. Um, you're going to see me tacking everything together today or in this first part of the video. Unfortunately, my for stainless steel, you need stainless steel filler rod. I did not have that. I had to order it and the eBay seller that I used uh, decided not to ship it for four days after they got my money, which sucks. Um, so for today, we're just going to be cutting stuff out, fabricating it up, tacking it in, um, and then we'll kind of uh, go from there. So with that being said, uh, if you have any questions about what a surf pipe is, how it works, please leave me a comment down in the description below. I read all my comments. I'm more than happy to answer and explain, but I think we're ready to start fitting stuff to the boat. So here we are under the bottom of the boat. As you can see, these are the factory flappers, and there's screws here at the bottom, and two screws here at the top, and we're actually going to use these two at the bottom, these two in the top, we're going to leave these middle ones alone. And we're going to remove this flapper, <clears throat> and in its place, using these four screw holes, we're going to mount our adapters. So let me remove these guys real quick, and then uh, remove this one real quick, and I'll show you guys the adapter and how it's going to work. So now you can see this is the fitting that mounts the exhaust through the hull and our three inch stainless pipe fits in here pretty much perfectly. So we're going to use these little nubs, these little two inch nubs to kind of help provide some stability. But these are stainless discs that I cut off camera um, 
as you can see they fit in here pretty much perfectly um, and this is going to be our adapter so we're going to drill four holes in this and then <clears throat> mount the stainless piece on the inside and then there'll be a second one that comes out the front at an angle up in order to clear this um, taps plate It's actually been a really long time since I've used this saw. Um, unfortunately for cutting tubing, an abrasive is really much better than uh, a cold cut saw. You can get caught and rip it up. Abrasives work much better. Requires a little bit more cleanup, but uh, gives you a better. There we go. We've got our two sets of adapters, so flange and the inside piece. This is just two inches of stainless steel pipe. We've got them labeled top left, top right. Um, so these guys are ready to go in. And then, we need to, the next piece that's going to be part of this adapter is going to be another piece of three inch pipe that welds on, but needs to weld up at an upward angle to clear the um, wake plate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and screw um, these guys in, just two screws, just hold them in place, and then we're going to try to figure out the correct angle to uh, get that to run out clearly. So we're under here to find this angle and I wanted to just give a quick demo because this is something a lot of people seem to struggle with. So first of all you can have a tool like this, you can pick it up at Home Depot for a couple bucks, on Amazon a couple bucks, I'll put a link in the description below. Basically we're going to put this here flat like that and match the slope of this pan and then read it and it's saying um, maybe 16, 17 degrees, uh, 15, 17 degrees. Now, <clears throat> if you want to spend 20 bucks and want to do a lot of metal work, these are great too. This is a digital angle gauge. Now remember, our manual said approximately 17. So we put this flat here, and then we zero it. We zero it. There we go. And then we put it over here you can see it's about 15 degrees I took a measurement from up here and got 16 degrees so we are right on the money um, in terms of what our manual and our digital show so we need a pipe that's cut at a 16 degree angle facing up and uh, we just need it to be like maybe four inches long so here you can see the two exhaust adapters that we built. They're kind of just loosely bolted into the boat and tacked together. And this is what's going to allow us to adapt the rest of the surf pipe to it using the marine grade exhaust tubing. This is the marine grade exhaust tubing. It's like super reinforced rubber stuff. It's meant to be immersed in water. It's very tough. Um, and it's going to work great with the worm gear clamps to hold all this together. Here you can see there's our coupler. Um, these guys are going to have some band clamps on them and we're going to weld little beads on the inside edges to give it a little bit more bite. This is our 3 inch mendrel bend. As you can see it's way too long. We're going to have to cut this area down to get a little closer. This arcs down, this is in its highest position. Um, we're going to use this to find the middle line of the boat. But this thing basically just... Um, goes down and up probably about that much right here so as long as we keep this out of the way we're gonna have our down tube come down here and meet the uh, kind of center line of the prop approximately about two inches above the center line of the prop down here um, so right now I gotta figure out this depth and cut these angles down so after much cutting and grinding which is really all there is to this you can see the center line there I don't know if the camera is a little fisheye is gonna catch that we're pretty much dead nuts on in the middle and this is basically just the result of a lot of cutting and grinding just to get it to line up perfectly and unfortunately without the TIG rod this is really as far as we can get today okay so we have tacked this together 
everything is fitted if you line up with the center line of the bow we're pretty much dead nuts on um, the camera angle makes it seem kind of weird but I promise it is so now that we've tagged this together I'm gonna get everything transferred over to the welding bench So you can see these are pretty much fully welded up. I want to let them cool and give them one more pass. The inside doesn't matter as much because this sits pretty flush. Um, it's the outside that needs to be fully sealed. And I've also used the plasma to cut a hole in the bottom. That's for drainage um, when the boat is out of the water. So you can see there's two of them. That one's still a little hot. Let me take you guys back over to the boat and show you the other thing we've used the plasma for real quick. <clears throat> As you can see it's raining in about a thousand percent humidity right now but these little guys are brackets that we're going to use to attach the uh, main hoop to um, be very careful don't remove this screw right here you can see it's loose i gotta put it on from the inside this screw and this screw are attached through hole with a nut um, and if you remove it it's not very good okay so looks like we got everything glued in nice and tight. I put a lot of layers of that seal and stuff on. Everything is super duper tight um, on both of them. I actually sealed all the way around the tube. These guys are glued in. This stuff takes at least 24 hours to cure and then seven days for a full cure. Um, today is Tuesday. We're gonna hit the lake on Saturday. So this is a pretty good window. I really wanted to get this part done today. So the next thing is we got to measure the downpipe and the way this works is you want it to be about an inch and a half to two and a half inches above the center line of the prop nut. So we're going to measure from the ground and the prop nut is dead nuts on 15 and a half inches. Now we're going to measure this guy. It is about 27 and a half inches. So if we go to 15 and a half inches, that's our center line of the prop. We go up an inch to 16 and a half. And then up another half inch to 17. The difference between 17 and 27 and a half, 17 and 27 and a half, is about 10. We're going to cut it um, at about 10 and a half to allow for the cope that the pipe needs. Um, or sorry, we're going to cut it at 28 to allow for the cope the pipe needs. That's 11 inches. So we need an 11 inch section of straight pipe that'll actually come down at a bit of an angle. So here's our down pipe. As you can see, it's pretty much dead center with the prop, which is important 
we're about two inches up inch and a half up from the prop center line which is also important all that's left to do is just kind of find the right spot for it uh, and mark out a hole because we still need to cut a hole otherwise this is a zero emissions vehicle it won't run very well for very long um, and then basically weld it in here is our marked cutout. I've made a second line about a quarter of an inch inside. That's what we're actually going to cut out with the plasma. And then that'll give us plenty of meat to weld. And frankly, it'll be plenty of flow uh, from twin three inch pipes into this single uh, three inch hole. It's kind of oval. We got to do a little bit more fitting. Then we should be able to actually tack this in right here on the bench and then go test fit it uh, back on the boat. our finished welded and assembled product so what you can see I've added is I've added two tabs one here one here and basically the way this works is like that this is a piece of aluminum I need to get some bolts and some nylocks and this will basically drill out and bolt right there we'll probably use quarter or three eighths bolts they basically just hold it um, as an extra safety really this should be enough from the from the clamps to hold it in place um, and so all that really remains is this. So this thing is a three inch round tube, creates a lot of drag. And so what we'd like to do is, especially in this section down here, we would like to form it kind of into a pear shape, so a little bit sleeker. And for that, I've got to make some wooden bucks to try to make this bend in a way that I think will look appealing and won't look quite like shit. So the next step, I tied a string around the down tube. This will give us the exact shape. And this is kind of the shape we want. We want it uh, kind of pear shaped. So I'm going to use a jigsaw and cut out these bucks. And uh, hopefully we're going to be able to use the vise to kind of form the pipe. Now, what I've also done on the back of this pipe is we've added a center line here. It should be pretty accurate. And we're going to use that to kind of try to keep everything steady. Um, and what we want is we want this fine point to be facing forward to the front of the boat so it kind of funnels water out and around. So I'm going to go ahead and cut these out with a jigsaw and uh, then probably smooth them out with some sandpaper and do the best we can. I'm actually going to cut them a little bit oversized. So that buck wasn't really perfect. The tube definitely got kinked a little bit right here. But it doesn't look too bad, especially after we slash cut it. We're going to take this end off. And as you can see, there's a pretty good taper through here, which should help cut down on a lot of the water pressure and kind of help funnel it around this piece. So now we're going to pick an angle and uh, do the slash cut. And then all we have left is to finalize the mounting and we are Well, here's our slash cut tip. I didn't want a giant uh, angle on it, just a little bit to kind of help pull the exhaust gases out. All that we got left now is we need to install these cross braces. So I need to get everything measured up, drilled up, and that will wrap up this video. Well, here's our finished product hanging out. We got all the clamps tightened down. We've got our cross braces installed. As you can see, this thing is on there very solidly. We've got our slash cut. All in all, if the weather holds, I'm going to take this thing to the lake this weekend. And uh, we'll see how well it works. Hopefully it works really well because this has been probably eight real hours of work, um, which is quite a bit for a project like this, um, which kind of goes back to the idea that, you know, If you don't mind spending the five, 600 bucks, definitely go with fresh air exhausts. Um, it's a lot easier than, than doing all this yourself, unless you got a YouTube channel and you like fabrication. Um, as always, I'm Max, this is Mac Works. If you like this video, hit the like button. If you like the channel, please subscribe. Leave me a comment. A lot of people got these things on their boats. Let me know how much you paid for yours, how well you works, do you love it? Uh, a lot of people seem to and um, Maybe I'll report back on how well this thing works after the weekend is over. Love you guys. Peace.